Hi everybody, welcome to another career tutorial. I'm Crapman. And what we're going to do this time through is we're going to look at our um, interactive renderer settings. And uh, this is uh, this is how you your interactive renderer settings is where you can see how your stuff is displayed. Uh, and you have control over how your stuff is displayed. Now, uh, when you first go in, OpenGL is right over here on your right hand side. If you're ever having problems uh, maneuvering through your through 3d space until you get can find a way to get it fixed um, you can use software uh, rendering and uh, it'll take up some of the workload you notice that it does there's a, a smaller limit on on what it can handle graphics wise um, so you know I always use OpenGL anyway um, a lot more options and you know it's pretty stable right now so yeah there's that and you notice that you have a, a line of um, a line of rendering modes oh, you, got, you got your rendering mode set up up here um, and it's a line of uh, what would be your models and how they would be displayed now you also have that disp uh, that option up here too you can go uh, bounding box uh, wireframe uh, garage, I think. Non-textured garage, something. Oh, duh. Flat garage and textured. And we're doing textured right now, and I like to do textured at the lower at the lower settings. Um, I just want to have a general idea of where my textures are. Uh, some people, um, if you've got the if you've got the RAM to crank it up, more power to you. Four thousand ninety six. That's a lot of RAM for a lot of models. You know, if you're setting up scenes, so. Um, yeah, there's that. So I like using Texture Map myself um, when I just kind of want to see what's going on. Now, uh, your lighting mode. Uh, this is an OpenGL trick. Your lighting mode, if you're using a light map, you have different light maps that you can use. That one's pretty standard. You got your cartoon looking one, and you pretty much go through these and everything looks like metal on this you can go through the different ones and check them out uh, I normally don't use this this one myself uh, the scene lights if I'm if I'm using the interactive render at all it's just, just to kinda see where my lights are how they're affecting my t maps that kinda thing and have a pretty good idea of what's going on and uh, yeah there's that and uh, you notice your next section down is your display options um, you can decide whether or not you want to see want to need to see through your transparency and uh, you know your reflection and all that and you can anti-alias too and add more uh, RAM processing see how that is nice and smooth um, but one of the main things that you can use this next section for is to show your backdrop. Um, we're not going to do these other things down here, but you can show your backdrop. Uh, somebody was asking me about this one, and uh, uh, this is actually kind of a cool trick to know. Um, now you notice that in my interactive renderer, I clicked show backdrop, but I don't have a backdrop. Let's fix that. Let's go to scene, backdrop, map and you notice that when the map shows up it fits right inside the area that gets rendered so you got this right here and then we're gonna put a backdrop in there and there's where it rendered see where it cut it off at um, let's go ahead and get and you notice that it shows all the time now if you have a backdrop that you want to use and this is the one that does it the, ba the background doesn't do this so just FYI but you notice I have a 960 uh, 960 by or 1280 by 960 picture in there and this is a 640 by 480 um, picture that I'm using so there's that 
So anyway, uh, that's uh, pretty much a, a quick tour of your interactive renderer. It's a it's another way that you can kind of uh, see what's going on. Uh, it's ha it's you know how you can have more control over uh, the things that you're doing. So uh, yeah, I hope that was helpful. Uh, that's it for this time. I'm Kripe Man, and I'll talk to you again later. Bye.